Good morning, high performance computing fans, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We're here at Supercomputing 2024, midway through day one of three days of coverage here on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by this power packed, super intellectual panel for this next session. Feeling very lucky we've got, we've got NVIDIA, Supermicro, and Weka on the stage. Neil Ash, I'm going to start with you. Sure. Because just a few minutes ago, as we were talking about, Correct. you have a very exciting announcement. Correct, uh, and thanks for having us. Uh, My really pleasure. Really excited about the announcement. This is the industry's first grace-based uh, storage solutions. Now, Weka has been delivering high performance value across multiple different workloads, and particularly in the AI infrastructure space, we have been delivering tremendous value for the training workload where we have reduced the amount of epoch time by 10x, 20x, and so on. As we continue to see the build out, the two challenges are happening. One is the power consumption, and the power requirement in data center is growing like crazy. And the second thing is now we are getting into inferencing space where it's becoming a token economy. So the cost, token for dollars, tokens for what use, wattage use, and so on, becomes our important KPIs. So we got together with uh, NVIDIA and Supermicro and tried to attack one of the core problems that is becoming a cliff hill for the data center growth, particularly for AI infrastructure. So we are really excited. Uh, from start to finish in you know, few months, we were able to identify the problem and have a solution. And so between four of us, uh, we are uh, really looking forward to really changing the trajectory of some of the high performance computing, particularly with the uh, power consumption in the data center and uh, you know, as we talk through it, we'll, we'll highlight some of the value proposition we have, both on the platform perspective as well as how we can address some of the pain point in the in the system. So many things to unpack there, and very yes. exciting. Congratulations, that's a big Thank deal. Thank you. Yeah. Are you as excited about this as Malesh's? Oh, absolutely. I think the, the industry has had an appetite for high performance ARM CPUs for a long time. They've obviously had an appetite for high performance storage fabrics. When you build an at scale AI system or an at scale HPC system, the most important thing is to keep your compute fed and happy. And being able to take the same types of processors we're using now in some of our fastest supercomputers and actually put that into a storage appliance and get 2x kind of perf per watt impact from a high performance ARM chip, but now pushing through from HPC into actual storage devices, I mean that's tremendous. This is the very same chip that powers some of the fastest supercomputers in the world and it's now at the heart of the Weka storage solution. Yeah. That's, 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 that's incredible. This is going to help customers achieve scale. This is going to help a lot more people do a lot more faster and better. Correct, correct. So I think from uh, overall, if you think about it, uh, the performance profile that is required, required a lot more balanced performance. One of the challenges around uh, inferencing and the model, different multi-model environments, you're going to see tremendous pressure on amount of throughput and memory bandwidth required to move the models back and forth, particularly when you have multiple users running different uh, prompts now you have a, uh, embedding sizes that are getting like reasoning models and others are creating tremendous data set that needs to be moved back and forth between the GPU memory and the storage. You cannot have enough GPU memory. So in terms of the storage platform, having both the high performance computing from the CPU's perspective, but also the memory bandwidth that designed into the Grace uh, platform is really helps a lot. And working with Supermicro, we were able to architect the platform which has a right level of network I.O. as well. So now you have a really balanced platform that is really suiting the need for what we see coming up in terms of the multi-model, multi-modal uh, in, uh, inferencing environment, which is going to press push the data explosion to the next level. And so we're excited about how it has come together as well. Uh, that's really the key to building effective architectures. Everyone at this conference, they're obsessed with the idea of balance from a system design and platform design level. And it's the balance that causes you to need high throughput storage to saturate your compute environments. Once you look into the box with Grace, we've architected a chip that has a tremendous amount of memory bandwidth. We have 512 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth per socket in Grace, so that the Weka machine, uh, Weka, excuse me, has a terabyte a second of memory bandwidth in wow. aggregate in that storage appliance. Correct. That's, that's impressive. That's yes. more than pretty much any DDR-based yeah. uh, compute server today. And when you apply 
that high-speed memory bandwidth support, which we can, by the way, we can do that in about 32 watts of memory power. So this is very, very power efficient, very, very high bandwidth memory access. Build a storage backplane onto that, which is where Supermicro came in. Yeah. Um, we now have a machine that can run full out, very deterministic, very high performance, uh, uh, and it works in a way that you, you would have a lot more trouble if you tried to do this on conventional x86 architectures. So you have less memory bandwidth, you have a lot of bottlenecks between chiplets, and, and Grace being a very flat, very deterministic architecture lends itself really well to this. So it's great to see, you know, all the way up the stack, yes. but down into the storage. That's correct. But what I'm hearing there too is, is with, with that balance also comes sustainability. And, and you have much more reliable systems that aren't going to overheat, well, cost too much, yeah. Sustainability is all about doing the most for your most resource intensive like portions of your compute. Today, that's actually the CPU compute and the GPU compute. On one hand, sustainability and data center capacity go hand in hand. If I can deliver you a storage appliance that uses half the power, you can fit twice as much throughput in the same data center power envelope. When you scale that up alongside the rest of the compute resources, the most impactful thing you can do at a data center level is put you know, is to remove bottlenecks, and that's exactly what we've done with yeah. this design. And I think um, we already proven that a petabyte of data stored on, on Weka reduces um, a carbon footprint by 260 tons. Wow. So that kind of uh, improvement in sustainability uh, is going to even get further amplified by having a, a storage subsystem now that consumes less power, right? And then this further fuels to the KPI that is emerging, fast emerging, in the enterprise in, uh, AI space is tokens per dollars per watt. So now you have a, a solution, uh, as we said, very balanced architecture that is not only performing to the need for the how the next generation models are going to drive the demand on the data, but also not consume as much power. Today we are already offering, compared to an alternate solution, almost four to 10x better power density. And so you can pack a lot more uh, you know, Store. data and performance in the shortest possible time. And I think Supermicro did a great job of packing it, everything we talked about in one U, I think it'll be great to hear. Yeah, yeah tell definitely. me how Supermicro makes the Yeah, magic definitely, happen. I'm so happy we can work with the, our best partner, NVIDIA and the Weka, to build these new systems. And this is the first uh, NVIDIA great uh, storage uh, we are launching and the purpose build for the AI and the HPC. We leverage the latest technology, the EDS of the E3. We have 16 uh, of them in the one U systems, and uh, we can achieve almost one petabyte right now in the one U systems, right? And uh, with the PCIe. <laughs> I'm like getting nerd goosebumps yeah. back here. That is so impressive. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, with the Gen 5 performance, and also leverage the latest, the greatest, the greatest architectures. I said Ian just mentioned about the performance and the DRAM, the um, on board uh, memory bandwidth, and uh, you are have uh, no bottleneck from the SSD to the CPU to the to the memory to the networking. We are on the plus the Waycast software stack, right? You can convert this uh, hardware advantage to the uh, kind of whole rack and whole data centers. So we are so excited that we can be the partner and the launch this new systems, and we believe they will be revolution for the new AI data center and HPC data centers. I can tell you're excited. You know, one of the interesting things for, for those of us in this industry a long time, when you look at something like EDA, that's a much different resource usage pattern than Correct. doing something like a large CFD job. Correct. It's much more bumpy, it's much less deterministic. Yes. One of the things that we've been able to do with this system architecture that, that again, x86 chips struggle with is in an x86 system, you might have eight cores on a little tile, you might have eight cores on another tile, and you have to hop between those tiles. Mm -hmm. So if you know exactly what the workload's pattern is, what the usage pattern's going to be, something like CFD, this is fine because you can line everything up, you can pipeline everything, and everything happens at the right time. What we're really proud of with Grace is it's 72 cores on a single monolithic die. Each core is comparatively yes. very, very predictable distance from one another. Yes. When you build it into an appliance like, like Wake has done, that appliance will sustain bumpy or unpredictable jobs in, in a much better way. And, and that's really important because in HPC, you never want to be waiting. Yes. The worst thing you can do is be waiting. And Absolutely. if your workload has an unpredictable usage pattern, 
the way the chip responds to that type of usage pattern Correct. is just as important as how it might respond to throughput under predictable load patterns. In fact, this is where the matching of our capabilities mm -hmm. become extremely important because one of the differentiation uh, of Weka and Weka Data Platform is its ability to serve any workloads equally well with the lowest uh, latency possible and the highest throughput. Whether you are throwing one terabyte file at the data layer or 4K, Little lots 4K, and lots of small. <laughs> chunky, yeah. disparate. Exactly, and <laughs> I think we are able to you know, spread the workload evenly and be able to really deliver consistent performance. And that's what we found in the AI pipeline. There's not a single workload type. It's not like a classic you know, that's HPC. a really good point. Yeah, keep going. But, right, I, but so I'm really glad you brought that up because I think you know people know that AI workloads are generally big, or you know, but that it's so much more complex than that. Right. It's it's big in the amount of data that needs to be processed. <laughs> but if you go from ingest, where you're doing a lot of sequential re, uh, writes, and then when you're training, you're doing large amount of sequential read where GPUs get busy. But then we are doing pre-processing and inferencing. There are a lot of very mixed, bouncy, mixed yeah. bouncy write, reads and writes, and that's where the you know, uh, zero kernel, no kernel, uh, uh, bypass we architecture we have designed, plus the metadata scaling architecture, we can support billions of parameters, for, and which is where traditional storage stack completely choke. And combine that with the improvements that Grace has built, I think we are expecting the whole next level of amplification there. Yeah. The other thing is, even within things that are traditionally thought of as somewhat predictable, versus something like pre-processing, let's say training, you're now at this point where infrastructure is so important, it's all converged. So you might actually have on the same set of infrastructure, the same set of storage appliances, mm -hmm. you might actually be serving four different jobs yeah. with different geometries that are happening concurrently. Right. And even though each of those jobs may be somewhat predictable in its storage access patterns or its network usage patterns, when you combine them all together, you have almost a, a you know, multi-point uh, 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 propagation kind of interference that happens. Correct. And when that builds at a data center scale, that could be very disruptive. So again, it all comes down to balanced, deterministic yes. performance architectures, yep. and that's why this has been such a strong partnership and, and why Grace has been able to shine so well with this type of deployment. Well, and this is why you're the industry first solution here. Correct. Yes. And this, <laughs> this is all making a lot of sense. But it's also because they're fast. And well, so is, so, so is Supermicro. That's, that's what I was just going to bring up next. And I'm <laughs> glad, you, glad you teed me up there. I, so I'm curious, Patrick, you get yes. the phone call from Milesh, and he says, hey, I want to do this. Let's do this super fast. This is back in July, just yeah. to be clear. So the rate of innovation here is, is Yeah, we remarkable. got the email in the 11 p.m. I said, Patrick, I have this idea. Do you have a time to chat tomorrow? I say, okay, then we chat. I want to do the great storage. Are you sure? And then we discussed a couple email exchange, and also with the Ian, we found out just we discussed, right? It's a perfect match with the best powerful balanced CPU, and the Supermicro build at the best box, and also we have the latest component SSD and all the kind of the thermal and the design, plus the, the world class the software. Right, we missing one component. We cannot achieve today's results. Right, so we are so exciting, and then we just have a meeting, and the executive meeting, and then we decide to go, and pretty much four months later, so we have a prototype, and we are going to release pretty soon. I to anyone who says ARM is difficult, right? Yeah. We've seen Google with Axiom. We've seen Amazon with Graviton. Um, you can't buy an Axiom. You can't buy a Graviton. You can Microsoft with Cobalt. You can't buy a Cobalt. Yeah. You can buy a Grace. You can put it into a storage platform, you can put it wherever you need it, and the fact that through this partnership, we have hardware and software coming together that quickly, who says ARM is hard? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're proving that it's not sitting well, here. They're also really good though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think that that's a fantastic point, and this is where, again, the way the software is written for Weka, we are a true software-defined storage. For us to bring our software working on x86 architecture, to first showing up on, um, on ARM-based client side of the uh, functionality, and now uh, full-fledged operating system storage use cases serving out of the same software. The, it shows how, you know, how flexible the design is developed, and you know, as we continue to start pushing together with, uh, with NVIDIA on optimizing specific aspects of the design, I think I'm, I'm expecting to 
have a lot more value proposition come together. I think uh, Ian talked about converged. There's another use case for the storage platform that's going to be extremely exciting. In this case, the software part of it is going to amplify and leveraging the compute infrastructure by creating a scheme of soft, you know, so storage software and thus not requiring a lot of hardware. So this further reduces the data, the hardware footprint challenge, but still leverages the innovation that you know, NVIDIA keeps pushing and between the CPU, memory, networking, all the and, uh, innovations that are really driving the low latency, high performance, non-blocking kind of use cases, really serving well, and I think that really allows us to unleash the power of Weka, which is what we are able to deliver consistently well, and then partnering with uh, Supermicro to bring it out to the customers in a rapid space. There's so many different interesting innovations that Patrick and the team were able to think about so that we're able to pack more IO cards, more drives, so petabyte per, per you. Know, you um, it's impressive. So that's pretty impressive. I'm impressed. Uh, yeah, and I'm not just pulling your leg. <laughs> it's, it's very impressive. This has got to be really fun for you to see this type of innovation half this and fast. I mean, again, I, I, I love it, and the reason I love it is for like the first time. We have a single SKU of CPU that's in Grace Hopper based supercomputers, Grace Blackwell based supercomputers, Grace only based supercomputers, and it's in storage appliances high performance storage appliances. It's not, this is not your, your backroom yeah. NAS. This is a you know, fire breathing dragon mm -hmm. that allows us to sustain this infinite need for throughput. Yeah. And what that's, a visual what that everyone, was, you, that's what everyone here <laughs> is all about. At, at the scales that we operate at now in this industry, you can't afford yeah. for, for, for anything in terms of performance, in terms of latency, to be non-deterministic. Yeah. And we're solving that by putting the same chips at every level of the stack. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool to me. It is really cool. This whole partnership is really cool. Okay, gentlemen, we are tearing through the segment, which is awesome. I have one final question for you. Okay. Today, obviously, a huge day. Again, congratulations. Thank you. And, and honestly, just impressive. Speed of innovation is one of those things that warms my little nerd heart, and actually saying solutions like this delivered at a scale that's going to be dependable and scalable for all these folks is, is uh, amazing. Can't wait to see what your customers do with all of this. Since this has been such a great dialogue, and I'm confident we'll have you back on stage at Supercomputing 2025, what do you hope to be able to say when we're in St. Louis next year that you can't yet say today? Well, I think we will have, we'll show tremendous proofs of various different customers <laughs> truly delivering the value to what we are delivering here based on the pace of innovation that we are driving, what uh, you know, NVIDIA is driving, what uh, Supermicro is driving, we will be talking about not 2x, but 3x or 4x yeah. value proposition at a, at a solution level by then, and talk about how well they have done with this product. So Spoken like, a, like a true uh, product officer. Yeah, numbers. Yes. You know, this is the beginning, this is the, this is the uh, overture. Yes. Once the hardware you know, hits a loading dock somewhere, that's when the numbers come out, and that's when everything becomes real. And we have all the roof line analysis to know that we're going to end up in a great spot and it'll be really great to show that next year. Well, it would be awesome to say on, uh, at theCUBE we'll announce the highest tokens in the lowest dollar <laughs> with the lowest wattage ever in the industry. <laughs> you heard it here first, and you'll hear it here first next year at, at Supercomputing. Patrick, anything you're hoping to be able yeah, to say? From Super Michael's eyes, I think this is a great start, but that, this is not the only one, right? We will continue to work with the best partner like the NVIDIA and the Weka, continue to involve in with the new technologies and the new GPU-related or HPC storage, but I think this is a very exciting, and uh, by end of year, the 2024, 2025 definitely will have a more product and the integrated product because uh, with the NVIDIA's ecosystem, you can easily to kind of uh, uh, connect to the other GPU or networking, the whole ecosystem. Next year, we will show you more. Ooh, can't wait That's to hear awesome. all about That's it. Cannot cool. wait to hear how this story develops. Patrick, Nilesh, and Ian, thank oh, you so much. Call to action, people should oh, check yeah. out the machine, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah.
check it out. Come take a look. Come yeah, play. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. Yeah. And and if you're not able to come play, I'm sure you can see some videos and demo of all the cool stuff going on here at Super Computing 2024 in Atlanta, Georgia. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I really appreciate thank it. This was a great time. Thank and thank you. all of you for watching wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're loving Georgia. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.